Okay, so if you're a developer building apps and databases with Postgres, today we're going to have a look at the mechanics of Postgres running AI workloads. I'm joined by Charles Federson, who's on the Postgres Azure team. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. And so Postgres is something I think is really popular with a lot of developers that are watching. But I know AI is also very popular, so how do the two kind of fit together? Yeah, it's interesting. So Postgres is an incredibly popular database for developers. And you know, about 18 months ago, when the chat GPT wave broke, uh, one of the interesting things is that as developers looked at building AI apps, they realized that they needed this ability to store embeddings or vectors in the database to enable similarity search, which then feeds context to these uh, you know, language models. Right. And what we found is that Postgres, coincidentally, had that feature straight out of the box. And so while it was already incredibly popular, it's become even more popular for building AI-powered apps, and we're doing some even more things to make that even easier for developers in Azure. Okay, so when we think about like Postgres on Azure, what does that then mean? What does that give us in addition to what the community kind of does through the Postgres open source project? Yeah, so the community open source project uses an extension called PG Vector, which enables you to effectively store, index, and query embeddings. Now, what we've added is the Azure AI extension to enable you to query uh, or generate embeddings directly from the Azure OpenAI service. The great thing about Postgres in Azure is that it's completely open source, and we leverage all the other extensions from the community as well, things like PostGIS or Postgres FDW, mm -hmm. and we've also put uh, enterprise security into it as well. Yeah, why don't we go into this, because I know a lot of people probably use the latest, greatest Postgres, so what does our support look like in terms of the extensions that we do? Are we keeping up to date with kind of what the community is building out? Yeah, so that's the beauty of it. By design, we ship open source Postgres in the managed service, and it enables us to bring it to market really quickly. But we also support a lot of extensions. PostGIS enables geospatial for building uh, applications to require mapping-like capabilities, and Postgres FTW enables you to uh, effectively uh, query external databases. Vector, as I mentioned already, provides indexing to store these embeddings and query over them efficiently. And the Azure AI extension enables you to write SQL that queries against models in the Azure OpenAI service pass data and return those embeddings to store natively in Postgres for your applications. Right, so why don't we go through like some of the capabilities that we have from an enterprise perspective also with Postgres, because I know a lot of people are probably developing not just for like publicly consumed apps, but maybe things that are, might be on Microsoft Entra, for example, as part of authentication. That's right, so you know, all of these AI capabilities don't take away from the fact that applications still need to be highly secure. One of the nice things about Postgres in Azure is that we've enabled it with all of the enterprise security features you'd require. Things like Entra ID, so you can bring your enterprise identity to log into Postgres. Postgres in Azure is the only Postgres platform that supports Entra ID authentication. We've also got support for private links, for example, mm -hmm. so you've got that secure networking configuration and definitely customer managed keys, super important, stored in Key Vault or even using things like managed HSM for that extra layer of security for those encryption keys. And we also have support for things like high availability and disaster recovery as well. But before we go there, why don't we talk about like a real scenario where I might use this yeah. and kind of how I would build in AI into my Postgres backend for my app. Absolutely. So like, let's use a real world example. Here we've got an app where we can search for travel. And so in this model, what's happening is the application under the covers is going to be using the Azure OpenAI extension. We're going to combine it with vision capabilities as well for searching over images. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you how you can build effectively an end-to-end -end search experience all powered by Postgres and AI capabilities using Flexible Server in Azure. One of the really powerful things about these embeddings is the way that the comparison enables you to do similarity search. An embedding is basically a large array of floating points right. that's calculated using a model from text data. Mm -hmm. And when you run a query with a text prompt, we compare the embedding for that text prompt you've submitted right. to all of the pre-stored embeddings in the database. Mm -hmm. The distance between those embeddings is the relevance between the search and what's in the database. And then we can return that. Here's an example of like asking about a cancellation policy. Mm -hmm. And the embeddings will compare that. They can pass that to the language model. And then that'll come back to the application with the, you know, the language response that we would expect for this type of application. Okay, so now we know what it's going to do. Why don't we walk through the app itself that you've built uh, in yep. terms of seeing this in action? Sure. So here's the website. And we can go ahead and do a search for a vacation. We okay. might head to San Diego, for example. And so let's go put that in the prompt. And we'll search for that. And we get about 120 responses, lots mm -hmm. of places to stay in San Diego. That's not bad. I could scroll through that. But I'm actually going to take my pet dog with me. 
So I'm going to put another text prompt, which is allow small dogs. What this is going to do is filter down further because I'm applying that small dog similarity search to the property listings in the database. So next we can actually flip over and take a look at the code and see how we build this in Postgres. Okay. So here you can see we've got the lodgings table and we've got a column that we're adding called lodging embedding of type vector. And the 1536 basically just represents the length of the vector we're storing here. Got it. So that's the native vector type that stores those floating points. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the next line, we're gonna generate this by calling the Azure OpenAI extension using the Azure AI extension we have, right? So that's the create embeddings. And you can see we're calling the ADA02 model. We're concat concatenating name and description, and we're gonna store that every time an insert uh, record gets created, we'll create the embedding based on those values. I'm gonna cut across here and we can create an index as well. HNSW stands for hierarchical, navigatable, small world. A little bit of a mouthful. Bit of a mouthful, yeah. But it's a, it's a way of vector, indexing vectors for really high performance queries. And then I can go ahead and show you what a query looks like. So this query is actually doing two cool things in Postgres. Mm -hmm. The first in the order by is we're comparing that lodging embedding column that create the embedding for every description of every property with the search phrase that I put in. And that was effectively allow small dogs. Okay. What I'm also doing here, however, is using PostGIS for geospatial because I want to make sure that I'm looking for all the places, not just in San Diego, but within 30 miles of a given point in San Diego that I may have set in search. We're using a few extensions here then. Yeah, yeah. so it's really powerful. And you can see it's, it's just SQL, right? So right. if you can develop in SQL in a, in a relational database, you could do this in Postgres. Okay, so what would it look like then if I go back to the site, why don't we have a look at kind of adding additional information to it? Yeah, so imagine we want to stay somewhere near the beach. Uh, San Diego's got some fantastic beaches. So let's look for a beach view. So the way this is working, if we look back in the code, is we're actually using capabilities in Azure AI to vectorize images. And mm -hmm. we can store those embeddings in Postgres as well. And so okay. the search process is the same. We're still searching over embeddings, but rather than taking text as we did previously, right. now we're using an image. Embeddings are embeddings, large arrays of floating point numbers. Right. And so now when we come back and review the, pro the outcome of our search, you can see that all of the photos have beaches in them, yep. which is great. And then we can also see that, as we looked for, they're also suitable for my small dog as well. So ah. this really powerful combination of how we can take the Im information from images and text, use geospatial in a simple SQL-based search experience. And so what this means, I guess, if I translate this, so it, the images themselves were used. You didn't describe the images. There wasn't metadata there or a description text or anything. It took the image. It kind of defined what was in the image. Same thing with the dog, if the dog was permitted in the hotel and yeah. those kind of things. It's finding the description of the hotel or the reviews. Yep. You don't have to have a tag or a specific column or something that tells me that because it can find that all in the text. And it's That's doing right. the same thing kind of for all these different fields. That's fascinating. So why don't we then go into kind of what this looks like behind the scenes for maybe uh, things like reviews or how would, I, how would I assess sentiment and kind of look at that type of data? Yeah, so look, one of the things when, you're, when I'm looking for places to go stay anyway, I always take a look at the reviews. So we've been able to filter down to a smaller set of properties that are applicable for my requirements. Mm -hmm. Now we want to look a little deeper. The thing is that the reviews themselves are often quite expansive and take time. Right, yeah. So we can use the summarization capabilities and sentiment capabilities built into the Azure AI extension in Postgres to generate that information as well. So the user can get a really quick sense of the property. So here we are in the code, and you can see we're using Azure Cognitive Sentiment. We're passing the review text. And if we go ahead and run that, you can see the positive score of 0.98 was what we just showed in the UI mm -hmm. for the 98% positive. We can also summarize the, um, the review, and that's using the summarize abstractive function here, all in SQL. And that's really the powerful thing. If you can write SQL into a relational database, you can use all of these AI capabilities in Postgres in Azure. And so here's the sum summarization of that text as well. Cool, and of course it's, it's 2024, so everybody's gonna wanna see some kind of a chat experience with our hotel search. So yeah. how can I combine Postgres then with generative AI for something like that? Absolutely, so what we've shown so far is what's commonly used as the foundational context for, for powering an LM. We didn't show a, a language model here until mm -hmm. now. And so on the right-hand side, you can see that we've got a chat experience. I've got a couple of filters as well that you can just click on. So imagine you click on hidden fees. Right. What this is going to do is go search in the database again using the embeddings. It's looking for any text in those descriptions that talk about hidden fees. And it's going to feed that back to the language model to produce that really so human-friendly output. 
Right. So here on the right hand side, you can see that it has found some hidden fees in the coastal village coast. Those always get coast. me. They always get me. And so this is what the code looks like here. So we're back in and we're calling the Azure AI extension. We're going to use uh, the DaVinci engine here for generating this response. And this will run through. It produces that, uh, you know, that clean output for us. And I can surface that to the user. The key thing here is that all of these experiences we showed in the app are all effectively powered by Postgres and its interact, inter, uh, integration sorry, with the AI capabilities in Azure. It's great to see all the different extensibility options with the extension, then all the AI capabilities with Azure behind it, the ADA2 embedding model, all these things that you can do as part of the native extension story. I would encourage anybody who's watching right now to have a look at aka.ms slash PostgreSQL for all the information about what we just saw and more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.